The Natchez Trace has always seen its share of visitors, from early Native American foot traffic all the way up to the modern day automobile. But in our next story, we see the Natchez Trace from a different viewpoint, from the seat of a bicycle. You could call me a touring cyclist or a uh, adventure cyclist. I try to seek out back roads and uh, just interesting routes that you know let me see the the countryside. And the Natchez Trace is uh, is great from a cycling standpoint because it's very smooth pavement. It's just a straight shot. I don't have to stop and go, and there are no intersections to deal with, no stop signs. It goes all the way from near Nashville down to Natchez, Mississippi. You uh, never are sure exactly what you're going to run into, what kind of weather you're going to put up with. Um, you know, hope for the best, but you prepare for the worst, and, uh, and that's part of the fun of it. The Natchez Trace originally was a hunting route. The trace refers to the trace of the bison, or the, uh, uh, the poop, if you will. <laughs> the bison would follow a, a relatively high route going from the coast up to uh, the, I guess, foothills of the Appalachians near Nashville. And the natives would follow this route you know, as part of their hunting route. When white settlers came along, they used these already established routes as a trade route. They could take things down the Mississippi and then go by land back up the Natchez Trace. Yeah, I tried to keep the, the history uh, in mind along the way. Presently, we're at Witch Dance campsite. It's a bicycle-only campsite. Historically, apparently, it was the site of witch ceremonies, at least by legend. <laughs> Along the way, there's a few uh, cycling-only campsites, which is really neat to not have to share your campsite with a massive land yacht. It's a little quieter that way. I see people who come from all over the country to ride the Natchez Trace. As far as, as Washington, Colorado, folks just going around the country and uh, riding all of the big adventure cycling routes. I'm from upstate New York, Gloversville, New York. And with a buddy of mine, we started riding in Chicago, Illinois. And we're finishing up in New Orleans, so we're just passing through here. It's a tranquil stretcher of road. It's in very good shape. It's just great not seeing all the development and power lines always run perpendicular. They don't run parallel to the road. There's no billboards. There's no franchises. Houses are even obscured from view. So yeah, it's, it's been beautiful. Just a great time of year with wildflowers blooming up all along the way. I'm from Maryland. I just came down here to, to tour for a little while. Uh, this is my second time down here. Last time I did the northern section, and uh, this time I started in Tupelo. I'm going to go down to Natchez and then turn around and ride back again. It's a nice ride down here and uh, a little warmer here than Maryland right now. So for me, it's therapy, you know. And sometimes, you know, any traveling, uh, you know, it's you, you can look back on it and say it was great, but there's hard parts and there's easy parts and 
And uh, sometimes you wonder why you're doing it, and that's a reward I can pretty much count on no matter how a trip goes for me. There is a, a really cool nostalgia about, you know, following the people who traveled the Natchez Trace before us, you know, using a bicycle to do so. And while it's definitely not as primitive of a method that they used, it gets you a little more personal with, uh, with the land around you and uh, makes you realize that the struggle it was to, to travel that route uh, without the use of, of modern uh, motors or machinery. Thanks for joining us. If you like what you see, subscribe to Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Till next time, I'll be seeing you on Mississippi Roads.